If you've ever been to a car meet, you'll recognize this noise. It's the soundtrack of the Nissan sports cars we know and love. But there's a crazy story behind the music. The story of a car that put Infinity in the company of some of the most recognizable sport luxury brands in the world. Among its lineage are cars like the infamous Nissan Skyline, and its creator is the father of none other than Godzilla itself. It's so good, its legacy has survived more than 20 years since its conception. This is the car that saved Infinity as we know it, and why the best Skyline isn't a Nissan at all. This is the Infinity G35. In the early 2000s, you could take your pick of scandals and controversies swirling their way across MSN's homepage. Halfway across the world in the land of the rising sun, Nissan's luxury brand Infinity was in a storm of its own. Their sales were sputtering, their lineup was uninspiring, and the critics were relentless. Infinity had entered the market in 1989 as Nissan's answer to Toyota's Lexus and Honda's Acura. But by the late 90s, Infinity was barely keeping its head above water. In those tumultuous times, the team at Nissan knew they needed to make a change. And that change came in the form of a man named Carlos Ghosn, a Lebanese-Brazilian executive who would become known as Le Cost Killer. Ghosn's rescue plan was straightforward, but audacious. Reduce costs, increase efficiency, and reinvigorate the lineup with exciting stylish vehicles that could compete with the best from Europe and America. During the 90s and early 2000s, Germany in particular was the king of sport luxury vehicles. Think BMW's 3 and 5 series, Audi's latest A4 and A6, and a slew of whatever the powerhouse Mercedes was drumming up. They had more power and were built with much better materials than anything coming out of Japan at the time. But Infinity wasn't just gonna lay down and take it. They aimed to challenge the luxury world, and challenge they did. The idea was to create a car that was not only luxurious, but also engaging. To bring this vision to life, Infinity turned to its parent company, Nissan, for inspiration and technology. The all-new G35 would be built on Nissan's new front midship platform, which had the engine placed behind the front axle for better weight distribution and handling. The development process for the G35 started in the late 90s with Kazutoshi Mizuno, and this guy is a badass. Mizuno was an accomplished engineer and racing veteran leading the project. He'd worked heavily on Nissan's motorsport division and is considered the father of the Nissan GTR. No explanation needed. His experience in both luxury and performance car development would prove invaluable in the creation of the G35. It was going to be a sexy rear-wheel drive sports sedan designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the segment's heavyweight, the BMW 3 Series. This was no small task, as the 3 Series was regarded as the benchmark for the compact luxury sports sedan. And not only was its project chief a man synonymous with the GTR, but the car itself was given life from the Nissan Skyline platform. Maybe you've heard of it. Well, wouldn't you agree? These days, we seem to be doing a bunch more online shopping. And well, that's where today's sponsor, Honey, is something you need to be using. It's the free internet browser extension and really my online saving sidekick. It automatically scours the internet for promotional codes to give you discounts wherever you like to shop. It already works for the things you're already buying. And it's so easy to install with just two clicks and you'll be able to use it on lots of your favorite websites. And how easy is it to use? Well, it just pops up at checkout and asks if you want to apply coupons. And it's really that simple to save money. It seriously starts searching for coupon codes automatically and works on all types of websites. And all you gotta do is hit the accept and you'll save money. Everything from auto parts websites, gaming websites, tech websites, literally everything. So if you have a computer, Honey needs to be on it. Just go to joinhoney.com slash idealmedia. That's joinhoney.com slash idealmedia. And be sure to download it because we have it on all our computers here at Ideal. And thank you, Honey, for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the best tuner cars ever. While the first Infiniti G Series sedans were based on the Nissan Primera, the G35 project was gonna be a badge engineered version of the V35 Skyline sold in Japan. A move that made controversy surrounding the true intentions of the new Infiniti. Was it true to the Skyline name, or was it just a brand marketing gimmick? Well, it's unquestionably tied to the Skyline name, and you better believe there are those who changed their G35 badges out for JDM clout, but other than that and its four doors, not much else was kept from the previous Skyline generation. Mizuno wanted the G35 to outhandle the old car, and not only in the corners, but on the bumps too. He revised the old four-wheel multi-link suspension setup by changing to a double pivot system on the front with alloy arms. At the rear, he revised the attachment points for all the suspension components. Of course, it got different springs, different shocks. All of this together reduced the unsprung weight by a huge margin 
giving the new Nissan a smooth yet controllable ride. But just as important as its moving parts was its good looks. Utilizing his motorsport background, Mizuno shaped the G35 with an impressively low drag coefficient of just 0.27, achieving an aerodynamic package with zero lift, thereby eliminating the necessity for a visually unappealing rear spoiler. The structure of the G35 features a twin bulkhead layout, a design choice that effectively minimizes vibration and helps keep the interior insulated from unwanted noise and heat. In fact, much of the styling can be drawn from the 2000 Infiniti XVL, the company's first ever concept car. And as development progressed, rumors started swirling about the G35's drivetrain. Nissan's newly developed 3.5 liter V6, dubbed the VQ35, was to be the heart of the G35. Remember, the G35 needed to be sporty, with enough power to move all the luxury items inside of it. The car needed a power plant with good packaging and more punch than the inline four engines in the old G20. Plus, the VQ sings like a polished brass instrument. Maybe a slightly broken one. At the time of its unveiling at the 2002 New York Auto Show, public opinion was a mixed bag. Many were simply excited to see Infiniti make the effort to build a 3 Series competitor, but others saw the G35 as an imposter, a mere poser capitalizing on the Skyline's legacy. In spite of the controversy, when the G35 hit showrooms for the 2003 model year, it was a hit. The car's sleek, modern design, balanced performance, and competitive price made it an appealing choice for those looking for something different from the typical German or American luxury sedans. Furthermore, the G35 came in two flavors, a sleek four-door sedan and a sporty two-door coupe. This gave buyers the choice between practicality and performance, and allowed Infiniti to compete with both the BMW 3 Series and the Audi A4. Regardless, Infiniti had a tough go of it from the very beginning. I mean, they made some nice luxury cars in the 90s, but it never broken out of the shadow that companies like BMW and Lexus had cast over them in the segment. The G35 was their international ticket to mainstream recognition as a brand that could do it all, despite what they were faced with. But did the G35 succeed in its mission to compete with the 3 Series? In many ways, yes. The G35 was praised for its powerful engine, balanced handling, and high quality interior. It offered a unique blend of Japanese reliability and European style, performance, and luxury. Moreover, its success helped to revitalize the Infiniti brand entirely, breathing new life into a struggling automaker and proving Nissan could genuinely compete in the luxury segment. While the G35 may not have completely dethroned the 3 Series, it certainly gave it a run for its money. And it proved that Infiniti could not only build a legitimate sports sedan, it helped set the stage for the brand's future success. The legacy of the G35 is clear today, because after that car, Infiniti continued to build on its newfound success with models like the G37 and the Q50. They've carved a niche for themselves as a brand that offers performance and luxury in a package that's more unique and adventurous than the typical European luxury car. Infiniti's G35 has garnered a loyal following in the car enthusiast community. Its potent VQ35 engine, rear-wheel drive layout, and general tunability have made it a popular choice for modification and even track use. People have swapped in turbochargers or even larger engines, transformed their G35s into drift missiles, or meticulously tuned them for high-performance driving. This, in turn, has led to a flourishing aftermarket for Infiniti's G, further enhancing its appeal. Looking back, the controversy over the G35's lineage seems almost quaint. In today's automotive world, platform and part sharing is common practice, a necessary move to reduce costs and increase efficiency. Yes, the G35 was based on the same platform as the Nissan 350Z, and shared several components with the Japanese market skyline, but it was far from a mere rebadge. Infiniti went to great lengths to differentiate the G35, giving it unique design, a more luxurious interior, and specific tuning for a different kind of driving experience. The G35 was like a phoenix, a symbol of Infinity's resurrection from the brink of failure. It wasn't without its flaws, and it wasn't always universally loved, but it was the car that brought excitement back to a brand that desperately needed it, single-handedly saving Infinity as we know it today. This was the car that proved Infinity could compete with the best in the luxury segment, and it paved the way for the brand's continued success. The G35 was a bold statement, a risk that paid off transformed Infinity into a legitimate player in the luxury car market. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, well then please give it a like and consider subscribing. Go check out some of the other ideal stories about other cars right over here, and I'll see you all in the next one.